So currently Twisted Fate would be in the broken tier of the tier list. This champion is beyond broken right now. And you know what the funny thing is? There are so many counters to Twisted Fate right now. You know, you have the Crown of the Shattered Queen, Edge of Night. And in the game you're about to see today, I am playing against all the counters. The enemy had a veal, you know, the veal enchant. They had almost all of them Crown of the Shattered Queen. There were Edge of Knights. And there was a Morgana with a black shield. These are simply all of the counters. And the QSS. There was also a QSS. I swear to God. So these are all the counters to have. But he can go through them. It all counters him. All of this counters him. But TF is still fine. And of course, this is not going to happen in every game. You know, you're not always going to see people with QSS. If you don't see that, you're going to run over the enemies. Like, they have to build these items to have a chance to deal with the TF. I'll explain why this champion is, like, beyond broken right now in the gameplay. Um, I'll explain all that in the gameplay. Now I'm going to tell you guys how to build him. So the build goes as follows. You know, you don't go for any Lich Banes first. You don't go for any Rod of Ages. You don't go for anything like that. You don't go for Blade of the Rune King and stuff. You go with a simple Nasher's Tooth. This makes TF a threat even early on in the game. This is a perfect item for him. 20% ability haste, the attack speed, and the bonus damage. Twisted Fate has one of the one of the highest attack speeds in the game. So, of course, you know, that's also why on-hit TF was very good. So, essentially, at like early game, you are playing on-hit TF. Your third ability will really do a huge amount of damage. But when we transition into the mid-late game, you want to have more burst. So, that's why you build a Lich Bane second. Of course, build the boots as well. Um, get a Boots and Sheen as your first items after the Nature's Tooth gives you a massive power spike. So Lich Bane is going to be your next item. This one will give you big damage on your cards, on your second ability. Like you're going to stun the enemy, it's going to give you huge, huge burst damage. Next up we go Rabadon's Death Cap. Rabadon's Death Cap will give you huge follow-up damage too. This is where you'll start to like get close to one-shotting enemies. You know, you ult a lane, use your second ability with the Lich Bane will do insane damage. First ability will do insane damage too. Third ability too, because of the Nasher's Tooth. Your attacks, boom, 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 they're gonna do huge damage. Next up, absolute mandatory item, Crown of the Shattered Queen. This one is gonna allow you to get a little bit closer to the enemies, not get caught because you have Crown of the Shattered Queen. Every game, you're gonna build a Crown of the Shattered Queen. Last item, you get Infinity Orb. This one concludes the build in a way that you're gonna be able to one-shot anyone with this build. However, let me warn you about one thing. If you're against enemies that are smart and, you know, they have a lot of Crown of the Shattered Queens, the enemy support has a veal, or for example, you see the enemy Jax has a QSS, you know what I mean? Like, if you see that the enemies have a lot of things to counter your stun, to counter your CC, that's when you're gonna skip the Infinity Orb and build a Magnetic Blaster. <laughs> Magnetic Blaster is not going to be as strong as the Rapid Fire Cannon, but of course Rapid Fire Cannon is gone now, so this is your only alternative. The thing of the Magnetic Blaster is the range, of course. This allows you to hit the enemies from a much higher range. To It's not necessarily for the damage, because you're wasting so much damage by not going Infinity Orb, but this is only to like make the enemies use their QSSs, make them use the Veal Enchants, make them use all of these important things for you to be able to actually go in and stun them, you know what I mean? This is when you go for that one, but in any other scenario, you're gonna go for the Infinity Orb. So like, I would say 80% of the games, you're gonna need Infinity Orb. In low elo, 99% of the games, I'm even willing to say, in high elo, it's gonna be like, maybe 70% of the games where you get Infinity Orb, and then th the remaining 30% where the enemies are actually gonna counter you in the later stages of the game, you're gonna get a Magnetic Blaster. For the enchantment, I don't really recommend you to go Protobelt, but I go Protobelt. I love it. I don't really recommend it, but it's just my playstyle with TF. It really fits my playstyle. Stasis is what I actually recommend. You can go in, stun a very important enemy. Like, you can literally flash into them, stun an important enemy, use your first ability, and Stasis. This allows your team to follow up, and then, you know, when you're out of your Stasis, you should be fine. So, Stasis is very, very good. Although, if you want to be hyper-aggressive, uh, Pro Protobelt and Jet is going to be an alternative choice for you. Of course you go first strike, this one is perfect. Like every stage of the game, the first strike is gonna be the best. <laughs> you know, you could choose to go for Electrocute, but first strike gives you so much more gold and it's just so much better. Like sure, Electrocute, there are some situations where it gives you more damage, but like first strike is totally fine. And it's, it's honestly mainly about the gold you're getting out of it. You'll do a little bit less damage than Electrocute, but the gold is gonna give you more, more items. More items means more damage, you know what I mean? So that's why I prefer first strike. 
Here, even though you're playing AP Twisted Fate, you're gonna go Brutal. Brutal is absolutely perfect on TF because you have so many basic attacks. Level 1, you pretty much beat everyone because you have Brutal. You take your third ability level 1 and with the Brutal, you're just demolishing them. The damage is insane. Here... You can go for Cup of Grass if you are always going to focus Squishies. It's definitely playable. Giant Slayer is going to allow you to actually do decent damage to their front lines too if they dive into you. Like you stun them, you're actually going to do 14% bonus damage to their front lines. Alacrity, of course, again, you're playing AP TF, but it's like a bit of a mix AP and on hit TF because your basic attacks really hurt as well. So having that Alacrity really buffs your damage a lot. Nimbus Cloak is really nice as well. You ignite an enemy, you get movement speed, so you can keep catching them up with that third ability. They cannot run away from you. Nimbus Cloak is perfect. Also, if you flash, if they flash away, you're going to be faster. Nimbus Cloak, 100% you need to go for Nimbus Cloak. This is like the secret little sauce that you go for this build. For the spells, you go for ignite and flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. So... This gameplay is going to be very interesting. We were we were against an extremely, extremely tryhard duo lane. This Lulu Kaisa. As I told you, what you're about to witness this game, Kaisa went QSS, Crown of the Shattered Queen. Lulu went for the Veal Enchant. And they have a Morgana. These are four different ways that the Kaisa can dodge my stun. How the hell do you play against that? That's what, okay, so let, th this is what you do level 1. TF level 1, this is what you do. You try to hit 4 attacks with your 3rd ability. Even if you take damage back, this is always going to be worth it. For multiple reasons. First reason, 90% 90, 90 of the times you're going to outtrade the enemy. Second reason, you're getting a lot of extra gold from it too. Your 3rd ability, when you hit an enemy while activating your 3rd ability, you get a lot of extra gold. It's essentially as if you took like half, half, of, half of a minion extra. Just like that early on in the game. So you're going to try to step in a bush and just try to fight the enemy at level 1. And use your third ability for that. And now, after that exchange, you just kind of chill in your lane. You're not going to do too much. You're TF. You just chill. You know, you win the level 1 fight. If there is no fight, you're just going to chill. It's fine. You know, you're going to use your blue cards to maintain proper mana. And as you can see right here, I'm just kind of chilling. I'm freezing the lane. I'm chilling. However, when your jungler wants help, Twisted Fate can do that too, because you can use the red card, which I'm sure almost no one uses, the red card to shove waves, which is actually way more important than you may think. For example, if uh, my cane needs my help right now, what am I going to do? I'm going to red card the wave, and then I'm going to shove it fast, because red card allows you to shove very, very fast, because red card plus first ability really does a lot of damage. Then you can rotate, you know what I mean? Now, on the other hand, I'm not really doing it right now because my cane doesn't need me. So I'm just kind of freezing it and trying to bully her. Oh, that's a Lee Sin. Honestly, well played by the Lee Sin. He waited out my flash. I had to flash though because if I didn't flash, I would have just died. Um, he waited out my flash and he killed me. It was very, very, it was honestly a very good gank. Unfortunately, that really sets me back in the lane. Um, yeah, I should have been more considerate because I had no vision on the right side. It was kind of obvious that he was coming. Because, you know, Lee Sin starts red side, then he does blue side, takes the scuttle, and then around one and a half, around one minute 45, he's gonna gank me. It should have been obvious to me, so that was my fault. Like, that's how you can basically know where the enemy jungler is gonna be. You put a ward in the left bush. This is against junglers that often start red side, by the way. And then you can just anticipate their gank from the, from the blue side. You know, more often than not, it's gonna happen. Because, like, Lee Sin literally never starts blue side. But if you're against Fiddlesticks, for example, you do it the opposite way. You can put a ward down on the blue side and then be more considerate towards the red side. Because he's going to end on the red side, you know what I mean? Morgana, same story. So that's how you can basically decide, make decisions like that. And that's how you can avoid getting ganked like that. Like, a lot of people may be asking, like, how do I avoid a Lee Sin gank like that? You know, seemingly, I, I had no outplay right there, right? There's just no way for me to anticipate it. But there is a way. I made a mistake. I should have known. Like, if you truly want to get into high elo, you need to know these little things right here. So you need to know jungle rotations. You need to know, oh, that should be a kill. Ah, never mind. It's fine. She flashed away. Being a bit annoying, this guy taking my lane. He actually didn't take my lane, so it's fine. I can go back, or I can take the heal. Seems like I wanted to take the heal. By the way, I am doing a skin giveaway, guys. All you have to do to enter, I can actually ult the cannon. I am, I'm 100% gonna ult. Oh, this is risky. 
boom boom ignite him very nice very very nice one so yeah i'm doing a skin giveaway and all you have to do to enter is put on a comment under the video i want to say something one of the winners from last month he didn't have paypal he didn't he couldn't get the gift card he was in a different region from me he did, uh, there was not a single way that i could gift him a skin at the end of the day he was like bro i'm just gonna i'm just gonna give you my right account and then change my password I, I guess he's changing his password afterwards i logged into his account and gave him a thousand wild cores i have never gifted a skin like that but i have to do what it takes to get the skin to the people you know what i mean it's very very funny uh, how that one went actually so if you want to enter this game giveaway, just put down a comment under the video. Also give the video a like if you're enjoying it. Again, it really supports the channel a lot. Right here, I'm running away while fighting him. Look, card, you see what I mean? This is what I mean. This is why Brutal is so important. It looked like I was gonna... He flashed. It looked... What the hell was that from Kane? But it looked like I was gonna lose that fight. But as a TF, you gotta stay persistent. You gotta keep attacking. Oh my god, he lost that fight. That's hilarious. You gotta keep fighting. While you're running back, use your third ability. Boom, 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 boom. Use the gold card. Stun the enemy. Use your first ability. Don't always just... Don't just run away. Use your attacks while running away. Excuse me. So yeah. Motherless, he has ulti. I think this guy has uh, has had a pretty rough day, what can I say? The way he was trash talking was in a very childish childish way. Very good job by the Nami right here. I'm stunning this Kaisa, but she actually flashed. Very good flash right there. Yeah, that was a good job. Oh my god, this Kaisa will become such a problem for me in this game. Oh, I remember. I'm gonna try to assist him here in the takedown on the Lee Sin. It worked out beautifully. I, I hit the Lulu too with my card. The first ability jumped all the way to Lulu and it allowed me to get a double kill. Oh, that should be a kill, right? Stun? Come on. Very nice. We killed all of them. Easy. Up until now, this game looks very nice and easy. You know, this is... You can you can kind of expect this to be your average TF game because of your ultimate. Like, your ultimate is such a powerful tool to get you ahead in a game. You can gank like no other in this game. You can literally gank whenever and the enemy cannot see it coming. You can decide whenever the hell you want to gank, and that's what makes TF such a powerful champion. Because now, as on top of that, he also has crazy early game damage. And we all know how strong TF is in the late game, right? The only problem, as I said, is the new items that counter TF. But like, going for the Magnetic Blaster allows you to kind of get around that. So take a look at what's happening right here. I'm looking at top lane and bot lane. All of them have a lot of champions in them. I want to shove the lane as fast as I can, so, so that I can ult. And look at bot lane, like I really, I'm looking at bot lane, you see? My eyes are on bot lane, I'm even telling them I'm coming. This, sh they don't even have a turret. This should be an easy double kill. Beautiful Nami ultimate, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful. That's, as you can see, the easiest double kill of your life. For some reason, this Tris this level 8 Tristana chose to flash for that kill. While I would have simply secured the kill myself, I have no idea why she chose to steal that kill from me. It's even wasting her flash, it's just kind of dumb what can i say and now i'm invading their jungle to like again this is what tf can do guys he stole my blue buff dude come on like what are they, at this point what are these guys doing like they, they were actually tilting me i gank their lane it's like come on guys just the, the only thing i'm asking is you just you know you just don't be annoying and stupid it was like my bad i was like yeah indeed indeed it was your bad why the hell would you take that blue buff from me you know what i mean like it makes no sense <laughs> I could have missed my Lich Bane power spike because of that. It's very, very bad. Very bad that he took it. Because also, like, now I'm losing power because of that. It's like, it's okay, it's fine. It's not a game changer or anything. I shouldn't be crying too much about it. But it's just weird how people don't understand that things like this let you snowball really hard. Like, look, look, I'm gonna gank them again. Look, I'm literally gonna gank them again. Like, this is what I mean. This is why it's so important to keep buffing me. Like, I am gonna keep ganking you guys. I'm gonna support you guys. I just got another double kill in your lane. You know what I mean? It's like, they shouldn't be taking my kills or my farm or stuff like that. It's not like they shouldn't. It's just, Tristana shouldn't flash for a kill that I would have gotten anyways. You know what I mean? Waiting to pick a card here. So I'm not in my lane yet. But it's fine. Like, I, I just killed them twice. So surely that means my bot lane is going to be nice, you know, like I, I really made sure to snowball the bot lane so they would not be a problem for us. But you guys know how broken Kai'Sa is, right? Like, 
Paisa is a very broken and you know how broken Lulu is. That's why I was a bit afraid of them. That's why I really made sure to gank them enough so they would not be a problem for us. Because if I didn't, they would become such a big problem for us. I'm gonna try to catch this cannon here, maybe. Am I gonna get him? I got him. Boom, boom. And he's half-life. Just like that, he's half-life. Just this champion just has so much damage. What can I say? Should be a kill on this Morgana, maybe? That, she's dead. Yep, there we go. I mean, just look at that damage, guys. That is ridiculous. Oh, he gave me Orm passive. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so sweet that he gave me the Orm passive. That helps me so much. Oh, my God. This is what lets me snowball even more, by the way. The Orm passive. Here, I can choose to ult the cannon. Let's see what I'm actually going to do. Okay, I didn't ult cannon because uh, Lee Sin was there. I don't want to die for it. I can actually save him. I even flashed. And there we go. I saved him. Very nice. Again, I can ult cannon, but I'm probably going to die if I do that. So I didn't do it. I'm just going to take that stupid, stupid little thing, the Poro. And of course, not leaving any jungle. Use the red card to clear jungle, by the way. It's really fast. Like, if you have to clear a grouped jungle, use the red card. If you're wondering why I'm not buying item with Orm passive, is because I need 150 gold, which is this lane, for the Ravenous death cap, as you can see. Now, oh baby. Oh baby. Well, I have a ton of damage right now. Oh baby. This is... I'm gonna... Like, they cannot deal with my damage right now. They just can't. They are... Oh, they just can't. Let's take a look. If I hit... Although they're actually doing quite a lot of damage. Oh, look at that damage. Look at that. Oof. I went for Proto Belt here. Yep. Getting back my mana, of course. I can ult the Lulu here. But I don't want to ult under her turret. Although, yeah, I should ult. She got a Morgana. I completely messed up. She still had ult. I didn't anticipate her still having ult. I just gave a what. I just gave a 1000 bounty to Kray Kaisa. And this is why I keep telling you guys, like, even though on hindsight it looked like a good ult, it was actually a horrible play. Like, this is why this is why I didn't ult the cannon earlier. But now I was like, screw it, I'm gonna go for it, I wanna play aggressive. And I got punished. 1k bounty to the Kaisa. That's the only target I don't want it to go to. I've essentially, like, gave them a chance to win this game now. Like, this game went from, like, an 85% chance winning to now probably 65%. Like, I, I just shaved off 20% of our winning chances, which is ridiculous. Just by dying like that. Such a dumb death. Such a dumb death that I did. Really, like, that was so dumb of me. Oh, my God, that was so stupid of me. I cannot believe that I made a play like that. Like, now, yeah, look, look, like, look at their way. Look, I, I did all this. I act, this is my fault. Oh my god. I'm dead. Yep, he one-shots me. I've just completely thrown the game. I've actually thrown the game. Of course you can blame my teammates for being bad players, but I like to blame myself. Because if I hadn't done that, this would not have happened. Because now she's even stronger. You know, she, she got that. She got even more bounties. She's gonna have... Oh my god. Oh my god. I do have to say, this Orn is doing a good job with his build. Him having Force of Nature really helps us a lot. Like, he can actually tank their magic damage. Yeah, they got Baron. Orn is dead. Oh my god, no. I, I'm looking for an ult here. But for some reason, Protobelt cancels your ult. I wanted to buffer my Protobelt to, to go off after my ult. But for some reason, it doesn't buffer. It just instantly uses it while you're ulting i actually didn't know that so i just wasted my ult i didn't know about but i guess i do now and i guess you guys do now too very weird interaction like that like why the hell would i want to probe about doing my ult you know what i mean i want to probe about after so like i wanted to buffer it but it it doesn't work like that enemies are playing smart they're pushing every wave cannon is pushing top kaisa was pushing bot Ah, oh, my team is fighting the Kaisa. Me, I know how broken Kaisa is, so I know she can just kill everyone. But like, someone needs to take care of top 2, otherwise we're just gonna lose all of our top lane to that cannon. 
I wanted to shove one more wave. I knew Lee Sin was coming, but I was timing it. I was calculating that like I'll be fine because I'm hiding behind the minions. But I didn't calculate him having an edge of night. Not gonna lie, guys. I did dodge that though, which was very nice. Whew, that was close. I calculated everything except for him having edge of night. I could have died. I could have died. Because I didn't anticipate the edge of night. But I actually outplayed him by flashing away and then dodging that first ability. And that allowed me to kill him. Very, very nice. The question is, can I kill Cannon? I, I, I let him teleport back because I just wanted to shove the wave. Because this is very good. My team actually killed Kaisa, which is huge. Now, now I got a whole lot stronger. I got Crown of the Shattered Queen. So this is really going to help me to not get assassinated by the Lee Sin anymore, basically. Or like the Kai'Sa even. And of course I'm taking their jungle. Why would I not? You know what I mean? TF is decently fast at taking jungle, jungle by the way. Definitely not the slowest champion to take jungle. And there we go. I took the red buff. I'm getting hella fed by the way. <gasps> I tried to teleport away. Ah, that would have been the only way of me to survive. By teleporting away like that. Uh, I didn't think they would go for me because the dragon was up. I really thought they would go for the dragon. So I basically ulted to help my team. But they just went for me. I guess they didn't care about the Drake. And I just died. I honestly got surprised by that and I just died for it, which is very unfortunate. Oh man. Died to the Kaisa again. It's Kaisa. Oh, she doesn't have crown yet. You guys, she, I don't think she has QSS yet either. I didn't look properly. But, ah, oh, it's gonna be so annoying to try to kill that Kai'Sa. Like, I basically can never stun her. Because she's always gonna have a counter. The veal enchant too. Oh, so annoying. Yeah, so they have... Okay, so they have a veal and they have QSS and the Morgana shield right now. The only thing that's missing is the crown of the shattered idiots. Lulu also ended up going for crown of the shattered queen, by the way. Just so you guys know. Yeah, you can see she has it right now. I just one shot at Morgana. But I'm getting equally one shot by the Kaisa. That's the problem. That is the problem, guys. My bot lane is pushing, though, which is actually quite nice, I guess. We're losing the game and the fight. Oh, nice. Well played. Actually, I really like that push that they did. That, that one little push they did was actually very, very nice. Because we don't really want to do all in. Don't jump in. Please don't jump. He jumped in. Oh my god. Wait, let me let me make the screen correct. He jumped in. Yep. Now Kaisa's gonna have Crown of the Shattered Queen, by the way. This is the moment she's gonna get it. And this is the moment. Here, by the way, I was like, do I need to sell my item to get the Magnetic Blaster? And then I decided, no, I don't need to. So I went for the Infinity Orb for the damage. And that's when I actually realized... Kaisa has four different ways to dodge my stuns. So I literally have to stun her from afar. Like at least twice to proc all of those things. Because Morgan, all of that stuff. Like I cannot go through it if I actually have to go within her range. Because if I go within her range, she's going to one-shot me. But if I get a Magnetic Blaster, I can shoot her from super far away. And kill her from super far away, basically. The thing is... Kane can very easily... Oh, there we go. I have Infinity Orb now. So I'm very strong. Very, very strong. Although all of them have the stupid items. Like, I just cannot go on. This is the TF Nightmare game, as you can see. Like, it only gets easier than this game. You know what I mean? Like, this is the hardest game you could ever play as a TF. Champions like that it can easily dodge your stuns. You know what I mean? I should be taking the blue buff here. And maybe even the red buff. I don't know how long it's going to be up. I could ult here, but I didn't because I thought all of them would just stick together. I wanted the red buff here, but it actually disappeared. We were very sad. Again, I can ult, but they're all sticking together anyways. This is where I realized the Infinity Orb was a mistake, by the way. Because I really want to hit them from afar. And I can't, because I don't have the Magnetic Bastard. This is the moment I realized me buying Infinity Orb was actually a pretty big mistake. So let's see what actually happens. Look, Kaisa. Okay, Kaisa's shield did get proc. She still has a QSS, still a veal, but I could maybe do some. Wait, her shield is back already? Are you kidding me? 
Oh, that was the veal. So she doesn't have a veal either. Which means I have a much higher chance to catch her now. Oh, my gold card went out. Ah. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna kill the cannon here. I mean, he's literally a free kill. Okay, now I'm looking for the Kaisa. I guess I'm not. Yeah, uh, she Q assessed. Even if I hit her, she would have dodged it with a Q assess. Tristana is split pushing though. Yeah, Kaisa's never gonna die. This guy's never gonna die. How the hell do we deal with her? Tristana, come on. Can you end the game? He's actually quite strong. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, nice. You know what? He's actually doing pretty good. Yeah, again, this is where I realized I sold it off and I bought... I actually did buy the right item now. With this item, I do have a chance to catch the guys. It's still going to be unbelievably hard, of course. Kill her. He could have killed Lulu. Kill the Lulu. Uh, he could have killed both of them if he ult if he just hit his second ability on the Lulu and then ulted the Kaisa. He could have killed both of them. He's... No... No... Now we are screwed, dude. Now we are screwed. Oh, man. I was thinking about ulting her, but I realized she probably will have a way to block it. But I can actually bully them here, maybe. Kaisa? I got the... She QSS'd it. What can I say? Ah, they got the Baron as well. Come on. Surely that's a kill. Surely. 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 Die! What a ridiculous champion. <laughs> she killed me. She was at 1 HP, but she just healed up from the Rift Maker. This is so un- this is crazy. Actually crazy, crazy champion. Such a dumb champion, Kaisa. I keep telling you guys, Kaisa is so broken. But luckily TF is also very broken, so... It's just in a situation like that, in a 1v1, you're not gonna win. But in a team fighting situation, I'm gonna be very strong with that Magnetic Blaster. I can just bully the hell out of her. She can basically not reach me. I will be able to reach her though, from afar, like from very far. Alright anyway guys, casual reminder, if you haven't already, make sure you give the video a like. It really supports the channel a lot, so uh, if you want to do that, it would be very nice. Am I going to ult her? I could even choose to ult side lane if I really want to. Twisted Fate is actually a decent side lane pusher. However, you got to be careful because you're not going to be together with your team if you do that. I'm not ulting Cannon here, by the way, because he can simply ult me back. And it is a very risky fight that I would take, so I, I don't want to take that risk against him. Because if I die, we lose the game. We just lose the game. Take a look here. I'm trying to reach the Kaisa with a Magnetic Blaster here. Or anyone. Look, everyone. Cannon has a shield. Lulu has a shield. Kaisa has a shield. Lee Sin has a shield. Morgana has an integrated shield. What the hell is wrong with this game, dude? Oh, there we go. That's a Morgana kill with the Magnetic Blaster. But Kaisa is my target. Kaisa, Kaisa, Kaisa. I need Kaisa. She can, they can just defend. They can just defend. Like, I need Kaisa. But then again, I cannot jump under them. I do have stasis, but like, bruh, it's hard, it's hard. It's even with the stasis, it's hard. Okay, right here, this is ideal. Look, this is ideal. She's dead. She is dead. The magnetic blaster doing her. Can we now end the game? Listen is up. We don't have Baron. Lulu is dead. Stasis? Can we end the game? We should be able to win the game. We won the game, baby. We actually won this game. What an unbelievably crazy game that we just won. Good God. This was just hell. There was the F hell. Everyone had shields, but we still made it. My team did a very good job proccing those shields as well. Of course, I got MVP though. I did so much damage that game. Let's take a look. 36,000 damage. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that was my voice cracking.